I welcome you to Central Moments today. And I'm going to ask you to really hang with me. I'm going to try to deal with a difficult subject as we just today overview the next several chapters in Joshua, which are largely a record of all of the tribes that and nations that Joshua defeats in the Promised Land and pushes out. This, of course, was a land God promised to Abraham. God's keeping his promise. He's going to give them this land. But in light of the teachings of Christ, where Christ taught nonviolence, Christ taught you should love your enemies, not spill their blood and defeat them. How do we understand the incredible violence and bloodshed that will fill the next few chapters of Joshua? For instance, Joshua chapter 10. That day Joshua, uh, verse 28, that day Joshua took Makeda. He put the city and its king to the sword. Totally destroyed everybody in it. Left no survivors. And he did to the king of Makeda as he had done to the king of Jericho. Then Joshua and all Israel with him moved on from Makeda to Libna and attacked it. And the Lord also gave that city and the king into the Israel's hands. The city and everyone in it, Joshua put to the sword. He left no survivors there. And he did to its king as he had done to the king of Jericho. Then verse 31, Then Joshua and all Israel with him moved on from Libna to Lachish. And there he took up positions against it and attacked it. And the Lord gave Lachish into Israel's hands. And Joshua took it on the second day. And the city and everyone in it he put to the sword, just as he had done to Libna. So how, what do we do? I'm sure your friends that you've talked to that are atheists have put this in front of you. Like, I would never want to serve a God who sanctions genocide. Well, first of all, um, this was 16 centuries ago. This was 1400 BC. Um, they're, they're, they lived in a world that everybody uh, existed this way. Every nation was attacking other nations to fall and rise. There was just bloodshed and violence everywhere. It was sort of the theme of 1600 years ago, in uh, uh, 16 centuries ago in human history. And God was keeping a promise to Abraham. Let me just give you two perspectives, though. First of all, these neighboring nations, Israel could not afford to coexist with them. A sovereign God has a right to keep his promise to Abraham. He is the creator of life, and, and uh, bottom line, he, 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 the sovereign God, can do what he wants. But the fact is that these were idol-worshiping nations that were incredibly evil, the injustice was everywhere. Everything that would grieve the heart of God. These were nations full of violence. To the degree that in the worship of their gods, they would literally burn their children alive. And then cover up their screams with loud poundings of drums. I mean, these nations were incredibly wicked and violent. And God knew that they would probably affect Israel more than Israel would affect them. And there is something of justice here, first of all. Secondly, we understand different styles or kinds of literature in the Bible. Like we read the Psalms as poetry. We read Paul's letters as letters to real people. And uh, this, this kind, what we're reading in Joshua now is ancient, uh, ancient Near East battle language literature. And like we would sometimes say, uh, my football team, that they crushed that other team. Well, we didn't literally crush them, but we know what, what we mean. Sometimes it says, there's, there's kind of a hyperbole here, a way of saying they defeated a city, we say they wiped it out completely. And uh, for, for instance, we, we read in Joshua 10, if we were to keep going, that, that the city of Debir was wiped out, left we're told, with no survivors. But five chapters later, Debir, the town, is given to Caleb as he conquers it a second time. So, oh, I thought there was no town left. Well, it seems like there was. So this is ancient Near East battle language. And so we need to always be sensitive to the kind of literature we're talking about. The point is, these nations did get defeated. The point is, these nations were horribly, horribly violent themselves guilty of all kinds of injustice and abuse of children. And uh, God's keeping his promise to Abraham. 
and somehow we come to understand that this then in the new order of Jesus who tells us not to be violent physically but says we are a part of another spiritual warfare and that's the best way I finally come to understand Joshua it's a picture in the Old Testament of the new reality in Jesus that there is a spiritual enemy that's coming across against us it's it's Satan and his demons and we're all involved ourselves in a spiritual warfare Jesus said the violent, the violent take the kingdom by force. And he was not talking about physical violence. But there is a place where we stand spiritually. And we, in Jesus' name, we defeated the devil at the cross. We fight the spiritual battle. And uh, we see the kingdom of God move forward. So, Lord, would you help us? Thank you, Lord, that you're a good and merciful and loving God. Thank you for the new order in Jesus who announce the kingdom of and rule of heaven coming to our earth and that we love our enemies but that we fight another kind of battle and help us to fight the battle for people's lives spiritually until lives are set free from sin justice comes to our world when you come again help us Lord in Jesus name Amen <laughs>